Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing dementia. Now, if you guys don't already know, on our YouTube channel, we have a complete playlist for the psychiatry portion of the USMLE Step 1. So if you go to our channel and go to the playlist for psych, you'll be able to watch all the videos in sequential order, and it'll help you prepare for the Step 1 when it comes to psych very well. And with that being said, don't also, also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It'll really mean a lot to us if you guys can show us your support. So with uh, all the pleasantries done, let's discuss dementia. In our previous video, we discussed delirium. And in that delirium video, we also discussed a little bit about dementia. We touched up on it very uh, uh, quickly, and then we moved forward. So this video is going to be... Uh, directed towards dementia. It's a pretty quick video. So dementia is a disease that occurs very commonly, uh, especially in the elderly population, and it's characterized by a progressive decline in cognitive and motor functions. And I, I wrote progressive in this colored font because I want you guys to understand that it is not a, an early onset or a quick rapid onset disease like delirium was. Dementia is usually a progressive uh, disease that takes time for it to develop and uh, manifest completely. Now, it can definitely occur in young patients, but it's usually a disease of the elderly. And in dementia, one thing to realize is that a patient is going to have uh, normal levels of consciousness, right? The reason why this is important to realize is because in delirium, patients do not have normal levels of consciousness. They actually have a waxing and waning uh, level of consciousness. Dementia patients are going to be normal, you know, for the most part when it comes to their them being alert and oriented. Uh, well, alert, maybe not so much as oriented as they progress in the disease. Now, unlike de unlike delirium. Dementia is a irreversible disease. You cannot undo dementia. And although there is a lot of current research happening right now on dementia and the processes of it, right as of now, as of 2019, dementia is an irreversible disease. So that's another key uh, distinction between dementia and delirium. Now, when it comes to the classic symptoms, there are several things that you should know. Right. The first thing is going to be memory loss and deficits. Dementia patients obviously forget uh, who their relatives are, who they're married to, and then eventually they forget who they are, and then they forget how to do their bodily functions, uh, and so on and so forth. Patients like these are also going to have impaired judgment. That goes back to kind of the memory loss, but it also affects their uh, judgment by itself. They're going to have personality changes. This is a very common uh, a common manifestation of patients who have dementia. And then in the late stages, they're going to have loss of motor function. I kind of think of dementia as a disease where you kind of forget everything slowly. First, you're going to forget who the people are around you. Then you're going to forget who you are, right? And then eventually you're going to forget how to do the normal bodily functions of day to day. And eventually your body is going to forget how to survive. Uh, it, that's just how I like to remember uh, dementia and it helps me kind of uh, put everything in order. Now, when it comes to dementia, one thing you should know are the causes of dementia. So, uh, we're just going to discuss that really quickly. We're going to discuss pretty much uh, the main cause of dementia is Alzheimer's disease. 60% of patients who have Alzheimer's diseases are also going to have dementia. Other causes include an infarction dementia, which is 20% of the cases. This is when a stroke causes dementia. That also is relatively common compared to the next uh, things we're going to be discussing. The third type is going to be Lewy body dementia, which is a, a type of Parkinson disease dementia that occurs with patients who have Parkinson's. And then finally, we have other causes like HIV, Pick's disease, normal pressure, hydrocephalus, etc., etc. All of these things can cause dementia. But the main thing you should know and the main thing you should commit to your memory is that this Alzheimer's dementia is the most common form of dementia that you should be concerned with. Okay? Don't forget the other causes, but just understand that this is the most common. Now, when it comes to working up someone for dementia, there are several things you have to do. Unlike, uh, unlike delirium, dementia kind of needs to be worked up properly. You can diagnose it clinically if it's, you know, progressed pretty far, but it obviously helps to have some confirmatory uh, tests. So, in the workup, you can screen with uh, um, EEG which is kind of low yield, it stays the same. But one thing to understand is that in delirium, so I'm just going to write this down, EEG, 
in delirium, delirium, the EEG is going to be abnormal. In dementia, the EED is going to be normal. That is a very important key distinction that we're going to talk about in a second. But this is definitely something you should know. Other things you need to know are that you need to screen for other causes, right, that could be doing it. So let's say, and this means something right over here, these two things, right? So if someone's having a stroke, if they have Parkinson's disease, if they have HIV, if they have a uh, uh, vitamin deficiency, Wilson's disease, etc., etc., you need to make sure you rule them out before you just decide that it's, you know, uh, Alzheimer's dementia. So if you can do that, that would definitely help. You also need to rule out one important thing, which is depression. A lot of times patients who are depressed may present like they have dementia, but it is, it is just a side effect of them de being depressed. They may forget people around them. They may forget to do tasks, and it's not because they're forgetting how to do it. They're just not motivated. They feel really down, and they just don't have uh, the ability to do it at that moment. Now, when it comes to dementia and delirium, we discussed this in our previous video, but it obviously helps to have a refresher. Dementia is a disease that is chronic, okay? It happens over a long uh, amount of time. It is a progressive decline, and that is the key word right here. So I'm just going to square it for you guys. This is key. It is a progressive decline in cognitive motor function that's also irreversible, and it, you're going to have a normal EEG finding. Just so you know, and we discussed earlier, an EEG for either dementia or uh, a delirium is going to be low yield, but it is just good to know in case you get presented with it. Now, when it comes to delirium, like we talked about in our previous video, this is an acute condition where a patient is waxing and waning in their level of consciousness. They're not always uh, conscious, whereas in dementia, the patient is going to be clearly conscious. They're going to have normal levels of consciousness. They're going to, uh, the delirium itself is going to be reversible. You can undo it because usually there's an underlying cause, such as an infection or surgery, et cetera, et cetera. So if you treat the underlying cause, the delirium will usually go away, whereas in dementia, there's nothing you can really do to undo it, even if it is another cause like HIV. If you treat HIV, the dementia itself won't go away. And then finally, you're going to have an abnormal EEG in delirium. Now, as we said earlier, there's no known treatment currently that you should know about for the step one. Um, and these, this is pretty much all you need to know about dementia. So I hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And when you do, don't forget to hit that bell notification. And also, go check out the rest of our videos on our playlist to help you guys out with psych, psych for the USMLA step one. Thanks for watching.